Welcome to the MIDI Quest MIDI Menu Tutorial. The MIDI Menu is divided into a number of sections. The first section, as you see, is related to transmitting of data from Windows in the program. The second section is for receiving data. The third section is for transmitting data from disk-based files. This section is for transmitting data. This is a panic option, and the final two options are for setting up your MIDI ports for the program. Now let's return to the first section. This transmit option is window sensitive. That is to say, it will change. See, it's disabled for the studio window. The studio window doesn't, doesn't do any transmitting. It will change for each different type of window that you select on. If I select a collection, you'll see it says transmit the K1 patch bank, which is currently selected. If I have no entries selected in this option, you'll see it is turned off. Or if I have a number of entries selected, then it will tell you what type of data it is going to transmit from this window if you choose the option. If I go to a set, then it will say that I'm going to transmit the voice bank, which is currently selected. If I switch to a different user bank, come back here, again, it will tell you that I'm going to send user bank two. And again, from this set, I can do the same thing. The next option is used only by sets and collections. If I have a set active, I can transmit all of the active entries in the set. If I have a collection selected, I can transmit all of the entries in the collection, regardless of whether they're selected or not. And finally, in some banks, actually let me load up a couple of entries here first. This is an aside, but it's necessary for an explanation here. For patch banks, some kinds of banks can only be loaded in their entirety. That is, you can either load and send the entire bank at a time. Some banks allow you to select particular patches within the bank and load only those patches. So here, right now I have no patches selected, but you see the option transmit selected patches in bank. If I select a single patch, then I can opt to transmit that single selected patch in the bank. And I can select multiple patches and send just those patches in the bank. By now, you've heard the auditioning in the background. You'll probably be familiar with that. I'm actually going to go in and turn that off so that we don't have it happen again. So that option when a bank window is active will allow me to send patches in the bank. For all other windows, this option is disabled. Cancel transmit. All of MidiQuest transmissions happen in the back background. So if I ask to send an entire set, that's a lot of data for a uh, Motif 6 in this case. It could take as much as 10 or 15 minutes if you request that all of the data be sent. Now under those conditions, you might want a way to cancel that. So cancel transmit will do precisely that. Choose it, it brings up a dialog and you can select what uh, MIDI ports you want to cancel transmission on. You can choose one port or hold down the control key and select as many ports as you want. Now, if you want to know 
what ports MIDI is currently being transmitted on, you can actually go and open up the MIDI monitor window. And in the upper area here, you'll see a list of each of the currently open MIDI out ports. And I've turned off Audition here, but if I go and open up the MIDI controller window, then you can see there's MIDI activity happening and displayed as I change different controls here. So if, you've, if you're sending a large SysX dump, you'll see that little icon showing up the whole time as data is transmitted. And you can go in and use Cancel Transmit to stop all of the transmission for that port. This option is used to retrieve data from an instrument. It also is case sensitive. So if I go into the studio, you'll see if I choose it, get voice from the Yamaha DX7, or if I change this option to voice bank, then I'll be getting the voice bank from the DX7, or if I choose a set, then it will say get the set from the DX7. If I choose to load multiple instruments, then again it switches and says you're getting multiple sets. Now if I go over to the set, it'll say get voice bank from user one because I've got voice bank selected or if I change that to another you see get voice bank two user two from the motif ES6. This will continue to change depending on which window you have selected. If the window is not capable of receiving data whatsoever then the option will be grayed out. In this case it's saying you're getting the selected voice bank elements. So you would just be loading these three items or if I switch to this and select get oh, I'm going to have to retry to do that there we go you've loaded in both items this transmit section allows you to load data from disk and send it. So if I choose the first option, I'll get a file selector. I can go into any folder and essentially select any MidiQuest, standard MidiQuest files such as a sequence or a bank and it will load that data and send it. So let's find something reasonably short. There's a drum pattern. MidiQuest is loaded and sent that data out. The second option, uh, Transmit Set Collection. Again, it is much akin to this option here where you're sending an entire set or an entire collection, but this time it's done from disk. You'll only see sets and collections listed. It's just a matter of uh, choosing which file you want to send and the program will open and send it. I'm not going to display that because it could take five or six minutes to send the data down to the instrument. Transmit MIDI X, which is a SysX file, will allow you to load and transmit SYX files. Now I've got one here on my desktop, so if I choose this, open it, it sent that sysx file out to a dx7 and for this option for transmitting midi x files the destination port is controlled from the preferences if you go here go into your midi option you'll see you have a default midi port selected and this is the default whatever port you have selected here is the port that uh, MIDI X data files will be transmitted out on. 
That same rule applies to standard MIDI files. Here what happens is MIDIQuest will load a standard MIDI file and it will search through the entire MIDI file looking for SysX messages and it will send all of the SysX messages found in that standard MIDI file out on the default MIDI out port. These options are various auditioning options. You can play a chord, and the chord is defined in the preferences under tones. Basically, you can set up as many as 16 notes, define the pitch of each note, define the playback speed, and here's where you can set up each of the 16 notes. I can choose any note I want, set the pitch, set the note velocity. So once I have this set up, I've defined four notes to play. If I choose chord, it plays those defined notes as a chord. If I choose play sequence, it sends out those notes as a sequence. Play last note, just replace the last note defined, and you can choose to specifically play one of your predefined note pitches. The panic option, is frequently found in sequencers and it basically does the same thing here you choose it it sends out note off events to all of the open midi out ports on all midi channels so if you've got a stuck note somewhere this should turn it off provided that that stuck note is on a port that is open to use by midi quest midi imports and midi out ports these are the menu, uh, sorry, dialogues where you choose all of the MIDI ports that you want MIDIQuest to have access to. So you should here select every port that is connected to an instrument that you want MIDIQuest to be able to talk to. Uh, you can click and drag to select ports or you can hold down the control key and make individual port selections. And here we're selecting the available MIDI imports for the program. Here is also where you're able to uh, define your SysX buffers. Now, the default here, 15 buffers with a buffer size of 7,000 bytes works in most situations. Now you can run into a situation where you have an extremely large dump, say from Korg instruments, uh, and in some instances you actually need a buffer size that is as large or larger than the largest dump you are trying to get from your instrument in order for the MIDI drivers for your MIDI interface to receive the data properly. So if you're having a problem with uh, SysX missing bytes uh, for a large dump, then what you can do is simply take the buffer size, uh, make it quite large, say 80,000 bytes. Uh, you can lower the number of buffers to say four and that will usually cure your SysX missing bytes problem. Now you can also have the reverse situation where you have an instrument that sends a lot of very small SysX messages all packed together in a stream and uh, in a case where you have a situation where the program starts to receive data and just stops it may mean that you are running out of available buffers for MIDIQuest to receive everything it needs to receive. Uh, in this case, you will tend to do the reverse. You might say set up 20 buffers where each buffer is 2000 bytes and that will handle that situation. Now, here we're just dealing with memory allocation. If you've got a wide range of instruments. Uh, you've got instruments from Korg that do large dumps. You've got instruments from 
uh, Roland or Yamaha's more recent instruments like the Motif that do a lot of very small SysX messages, you can configure it this way with a large buffer and a large uh, number of buffers. This will use up more computer memory, but not that much more and just leave it configured this way. I'm going to cancel out of this to retain my previous settings and we'll finally have a look at MIDI outports. MIDI outports is conceptually the same as the MIDI import setup dialog uh, with the exception that you don't need to set up any buffer information. So here you simply select all of the computer's MIDI outports that you need to have open to be able to talk to each of your instruments. Now I haven't covered MIDI port connections. This is an extremely specialized uh, area. You're only going to need it if you have uh, multiple computers with different MIDI setups where those different MIDI setups are trying to talk to the same MIDI instruments. Uh, in this case, you can enable this option it will allow you to remap ports so the same MidiQuest stores all of its port references by number and depending on which whether you're trying to open the data file from one computer or the other you can correctly map ports so that the uh, data automatically talks to the right instrument on the right port. Now as I said the vast majority of people don't need to use this option. If you need more information on it, you can check the online help. Thank you for viewing this tutorial.